Hello again, and hello to Sean. Glad to have him back in the community. Um, in this video, I want to go over some of the points that were made in the limits of science and show that I think the conclusions that are being made are arriving there basically through invalid arguments. I will take his thesis to be these. Firstly, that science cannot discuss purpose, design, or value and secondly, that the Bible can. Sean's video begins by explaining, or rather arguing for, a distinction between what he calls science and scientism. Now, scientism he defines as um, an epistemological disposition which only views scientific evidence as valid, and he demeans this approach. Which is interesting because the only real distinction he makes on science and other ways of knowing is that science is, in some way, only quantitative. And I believe that's actually false. In fact, the exact type of examples that he gives of purpose, design, and intent can actually be arrived at through science. The only thing we have to do is to broaden our definition of what we count as scientific which I think is valid. So let's go to Sean's video. I want to point something out. All right. I'm going to argue that this painting has certain qualities that are undetectable to science, which only deals in quantity. Now, quantity, things we can test, repeat, demonstrate, measure. You know, we can measure this. We can measure the size of the paper, and that's 8 by 11. Uh, the weight of the paper. I'm um, not sure how much it weighs, but, you know, we could weigh it. Um, we could probably uh, measure the degree of the pigment, how strong the colors are, how much paint is on the page. We might even be able to measure how hard I was pressing every time I did a brush stroke. That, that you know, you could do that, I suppose. So what qualities, what, what qualities are in this painting that are undetectable to science? Well, let's pretend. Let's pretend for a moment that my DNA was not on here. I mean, I've been touching it, so there probably is some of my DNA, but if there wasn't, if there was no DNA on this painting, and if my signature was not at the bottom, and if you only had the painting, there is nothing in the painting itself that points to me as its author. I take this to be a particularly poor example for Sean, because paintings actually are copied fairly often. There's a market for, obviously, forging uh, paintings. So there are scientific methods that are used to determine who is a genuine author of a particular piece, because there is such a burgeoning field in creating replicas. And the precise things that he points out, the um, the types of colors used, the types of paint used, are often associated with trying to determine who the author of a particular painting is. But let's say we didn't even have that, even if we only had the image itself rather than the painting. I wonder if he's considered uh, the use of fractals in determining uh, Jackson Pollock's paintings. Pollock's paintings would offer example par excellence for something that would be easy to forge. They seem to be just random blurs. But the interesting thing is that physicists have determined that there are mathematical These properties, properties within the fractals. paintings. They are the dimensions of the, um, of the piece relative to each other. When they're cross-examined in a certain way, we've determined that there are certain properties that we, that we see in Jackson Pollock's paintings that are absent in any of the forgeries. And since it is so difficult, actually, to create fractal, fractals simply on the fly, they use this as one of the many methods that they use to determine whether it's a genuine, authentic Jackson Pollock painting. The other properties that he assumes are out of bounds for science would be things like design and purpose. This, I don't think we have to go any farther than the theory of evolution. Evolutionary theory provides us with a great example of design. It shows us the properties, functions, and adaptations of certain organisms and certain mechanisms within each organism. 
we can see what that mechanism is for and furthermore explain the adaptive history around it. So in both of the examples of like authenticity, of purpose, and design, we get from Sean that I think none of his examples actually demonstrate that science is limited in the way that he thinks it does. But even if that were true, he makes a further claim, which I think is uh, also not following from his premises. So what am I proposing? Holy Bible. Word of God. He told us what's going on. And if you reject this book, the meaning of life, its quality, its purpose, you're not going to find it by way of science. There are two problems with this claim. First of all, I fails distinctively to meet the standard that he has set out himself. This is my Bible, and there is nothing within this Bible that would explain the validity of the claims made in it. In order to assess the validity of the claims, we need to go outside of the source text, and this is what most biblical scholars will do. And so if we apply the same sorts of methods that he is advocating we should apply to science, and we take them and direct them towards the Bible, we end up with the same sort of problem. What I would think would be more following from his premises would be that we need a triangulation of belief. We need to assess the basically the truth claims of various different sources, not just from science and not just from the Bible. But to claim that simply because science fails, therefore the Bible must be our only source, would also assume that we've taken a log logical structure that says either science is true or the Bible is true. Let's just put that in standard form so it's actually very clear. Either science can tell us about properties of design, purpose, or value, or the Bible can tell us about these same properties. The second premise is that science cannot tell us about these properties. Therefore, only the Bible can tell us about them. There's no other way to put it other than what Sean has given us is a false dichotomy. He has put up a sort of mock version of what I would call science and attacked that, but then said in, um, in addition to that, that if science is wrong about these things, that we go directly into the Bible. Now. He's further elaborated on these claims in a follow-up video, and I'll be addressing that as well. But my main contention is that the first premise in his argument has not actually been argued for, that we have to somehow idealize between science and the Bible. Now, I've outlined what I think are three main problems with Sean's argument, or three main problems with his video in general. Uh, the first is that he has defined science extremely loosely and extremely narrowly, and probably in a way that most scientists wouldn't actually accept. Secondly, his go-to example of artistry actually demonstrates the opposite of what it's trying to. And thirdly, that his argument doesn't follow because the first premise has not been solidified and, and put into proper context. With that, I actually hope to uh, have some response from Sean. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll be responding to other videos as they come. Thank you.